Welcome to Ralph's Fly Box. Today we're going to tie a very basic fly. It's a fly we uh, we all learn on, uh, basically because of its uh, its basic tying principles, but uh, not because it's only a beginner's fly. This fly will carry most fishermen on through the, their entire life and uh, land some of the largest fish um, that they will in, in a lifetime, uh, which is the woolly bugger. Uh, there's a million variations of the woolly bugger. Uh, I'm not going to tie a uh, a new tying style. This is uh, just my two favorite. These are the two woolly buggers that I stock in my box, and uh, they seem to cover my needs. So let's go over uh, tying a basic woolly bugger. I start off with a 3x long size eight hook. I'll tie size eight and ten, but this is this is an eight right here, and black thread. This is going to be your basic black. Some people like flash, some people like no flash, some people like all black. I add a little flash to the body and I use a little bit of, of an off black uh, hackle. But we'll, uh, we'll go along here and I'll show you. I run my thread back the length of the hook and I use fine uh, 15 hundreds or 15 thousandths lead substitute wire and uh, instead of a bead head which I do fish every now and then but uh, as a rule I prefer not I wrap the shank the entire shank I start off at the point of, at the point of the hook and I bring my th my lead wire or lead substitute wire to a point two eye lengths back from the eye gives me just enough weight keep the fly f from floating on the surface for too long when you when you first throw it out there yeah. sinks quite well but it still retains its action if you overweight a woolly bugger uh, I feel that it really takes away from its eff effectiveness if you put too big of a cone head personally for me too big of a cone head deadens the fly too big of a bead deadens it the first thing you're going to tie in is your marabou. This is a uh, black. Sweep everything to the rear from the feather, and I'm going to tie that in uh, about a gap length longer than the entire hook. I'll measure it, and I'll cut a quarter inch butt, and I'll tie this in even with the end of the, the lead. That levels my body. And I'll wrap back to the to the point of the barb basically. And then bind down all that marabou. You don't have to be too picky, you're gonna cover it with chenille. Next I'm gonna tie in my hackle. I don't use a rib for my woolly buggers. A lot of people do. I just have never found a need for it. Um, my flies don't come apart and the hackle stems are pretty sturdy, especially with the genetic hackle. But what I do is I this is a this is a speckled badger hackle, but I take from the back of the the neck where it's basically a glossy dark dun or black and as you can see I grab it by the tip and I sweep all the fibers towards the butt end and then I tie this in in wet fly fashion meaning the curve of the curvature of the the feather is uh, is towards the hook shank when I tie it in and I tie in the tip with the feather extended back over the tail of the hook and then we're going to bring our thread to the front at this point I tie in this is Orvis black woolly bugger chenille it's got a little bit of glint to it it's got antron in it, it looks like pearlescent antron in the fibers 
That's just enough glint for me. I don't like too much flash on these patterns. Tying at the tip, right in front of the lead. That helps cover up that step down from the lead. And then wind back again to the point of the barb. And then bring your thread back forward to just in front of the lead. Okay, next we're going to wind our chenille forward. Just one layer. You're not going to make it uh, built up. It should just, uh, this is, I believe this is uh, medium chenille. And I'll bring it to the front of the lid. Just pass the step down. And we'll trim our excess. And then with chenille, with a lot of synthetics, but especially with chenille, I bind it down a couple extra wraps. Just to be on the safe side. Next we're going to bring our feather forward. I don't overthink this. I keep the curvature to the rear of the hook. I bring it around and I space my wraps about an eighth of an inch apart. I'll keep twisting my hackle so that I keep the curvature pretty much to the rear through the whole fly. Then when I get to the front, I do one, I do two wraps, and then tie off. So it gives the, the head of the fly an extra wrap of hackle. And I'll trim off my stem. At this point, I wet my fingers, sweep everything back, and build my head. Now this is gonna you're gonna want to make sure that you build your head enough to capture all your fibers. I don't use large thread. This is only eight dot thread, so that's why it may look like I'm like more wraps than needed but I prefer to use a smaller thread it allows me to manage these larger patterns a little bit better out of the way. Had it hung up there a little bit. And it looks like I captured one. My whip finish, get that out of the way. But it's a subtle collar. I don't uh I just let the feather do the, the talking for me and give it an extra wrap for the collar and that's about it and then a liberal coat of Sally Hansen's on that head let it soak in good And that's it. Your basic woolly bugger. Uh, nothing fancy. No new techni the techniques here. Uh, just demonstrating the pattern and showing you the the patterns, the colors that I tie. I tie it in two colors. This is this is what I fish primarily. I use the black, which is uh, the one we just tied, and I use the the speckled badger for. Uh, for my hackle and then I tie it in crawdad olive 
and I use standard badger and the with the back hackle which is a little bit lighter but not much and uh, olive crawdad marabou these two patterns do the bulk of my heavy lifting when it comes to woolly buggers I really find no need to tie any other uh, they they pretty much uh, cover my fishing I hope that adds to your your box I hope it adds to your time on the water good luck thank you very much